question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm grateful to you and Ranking Member Schakowsky for organizing today's hearing and for your commitment to resuming this committee's efforts to advance comprehensive privacy legislation. I'd also like to thank uh, Chair Rogers and Ranking Member Pallone for their longstanding commitment and years of work on this issue. I'm proud today that uh, today that this hearing includes two bipartisan, bicameral pieces of legislation that I introduced to address widespread problems facing users online. The DELETE Act, which I introduced with Congressman Chuck Edwards and Senators Bill Cassidy and John Ossoff, would give every American the right to have data brokers delete their data and prohibit future collection. This is a common sense proposal that's been discussed before uh, in this committee because of the national security concerns with the way data brokers harvest and sell some of our most sensitive data to the highest bidder, including our foreign adversaries. I ask for unanimous consent to submit for the record this letter from 20 civil society organizations supporting the bill. Without, without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Provisions of the DELETE Act were included in the privacy package that was advanced overwhelmingly out of this committee last Congress. However, I'm concerned that some of the changes to those provisions in the American Privacy Rights Act discussion draft will not fully meet the needs of American users. Mr. Jane, how do uh, the data broker provisions and APRA differ from what is included in the DELETE Act, and do you believe that we should be strengthening that part of the discussion draft? Yes, I do think that we should strengthen it in particular by adding in uh, one of the central features of the DELETE Act, as its name implies, which is the ability to create a centralized mechanism so that consumers can, in one sh shot, ask all data brokers to delete their data, because um, otherwise we have to go from data broker to data broker, which is impossible, because most of us don't even know what the data brokers are. <laughs> right. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. Uh, under APRA's current draft, a consumer would have to individually visit 871 data brokers' websites and affirmatively delete their personal data. That's how many have registered in the state of Vermont, and that's just not feasible. Uh, my second bipartisan bill featured in today's hearing is the TLDR Act, which would rein in companies that force users to agree to unnecessarily long and complex terms of service or to use an app or access a website. A 2022 poll found that nine out of every 10 Americans have agreed to a company's terms of service without ever reading it. This is an even bigger issue for companies providing services directly to our children who are often required to agree to the same contracts before getting online. That's why the TLDR Act may, takes the important step of requiring standardized short uh, form terms of service summaries that both parents and young people can understand. Ms. Smithing, how important is it for Congress to maintain the portions of the TLDR Act in the privacy package we're discussing today, particularly with respect to clear and explainable terms of service for users of all ages? Yes, thank you for the question. Incredibly important. <clears throat> Earlier, Mr. Brody said that he, as the king of data lawyers, does not even read his privacy policies. <laughs> and if he can't do it, then I don't think we should be expecting children to do it. Um, it would be incredibly beneficial for kids and help them understand what's actually going on on these platforms. I'll also add that children are tired. They have to consent to hundreds of things before they go on their favorite apps. Mm -hmm. And this leads to fatigue and them paying little to no attention to the things they're consenting to. So a policy like this that expressly says, in clear and concise language, what is happening would be greatly beneficial to children. Thank you so much. Well said. Uh, it's essential to privacy and kids' safety online that large data holders are transparent about their business practices and are held accountable by third parties. The best way to do that is to require that qualified researchers are able to study how the decisions made by powerful online platforms are complying with the privacy laws that we hope to pass in this committee and impacting users. I've been working with Senator Coons on language to empower researchers to take a look under the hood of powerful online companies like Meta and Google in a way that allows them to do their work while protecting uh, user privacy and intellectual property. And I'd also like to submit another letter for the record from the American Psychological Association demonstrating the extent to which researchers' access to data is jeopardized and the urgent need for Congress to act to support their work. Without objection, so order. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jane, how important is it to protect researchers' abilities to access the data they need, and do researchers have that access today? Thank you for the question. I know you've been a real leader on this issue. It's critical for researchers to be able to have access to that data, um, particularly in the social media context where they have been the ones who have uncovered a lot of the harms and a lot of the negative practices that we've seen. And unfortunately, we're actually moving in the opposite direction. We're seeing 
company after company withdraw or make less available data that researchers need. So I think it is very critical that we promote and do that. Unfor unfortunately, I think APRA probably needs improvement in that area. I think ADPA had a specific permissible purpose around public interest research and the ability to collect and process data for that purpose. And I think we should probably add that back in with appropriate privacy protections um, to make sure that that kind of public research can continue. Thank you. We have some work ahead of us, but I look forward to advancing a strong, bipartisan, comprehensive privacy package. Thank you, Mr. Chair.